So, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, welcome uh, back, or for the first time, to this uh, second session of uh, my course on uh, Young Structures and SRB Measures. I will start by sharing the, um, the slides. Okay, here we have the slides and maybe I will use, yeah, the color yellow to highlight. So uh, let me briefly see what to uh, recall what we have seen in our first lecture. So we have seen uh, the notions of, uh, introduced the notions of SRB measure and the decay of correlations, also physical measures, which are more general than SRB measures. So SRB measures are a particular case of, um, of physical measures. And uh, then we have started to see uh, the endomorphism case for uh, transformations which are uh, not invertible. And um, I started with some considerations on inducing schemes and I'll briefly uh, show you this, this page. So essentially we consider uh, a certain partition of a certain subset of the phase space and uh, we consider a partition and a function which gives the time each uh, element of the partition or the points in the element of the partition need to be iterated to. And in this way, we obtain a new transformation that's called uh, an induced map for, for the original one. And we have some uh, nice results on the, uh, some conclusions on existence of invariant measures for the original dynamics uh, provided we know invariant measures in ergodic and absolute continuous for the induced one. And the idea is that the induced maps are easier, easier to deal with. And so we can, out of the induced map, we can uh, derive some conclusions for the original one. So this, is, uh, this was what we have seen. And then we consider some special class of induced maps that the ones I called uh, Gibbs-Markov. And uh, they are essentially, well, they are characterized by these four properties. Uh, the first one is every domain in the partition associated to, to the map uh, goes onto the whole uh, domain. So it's full branch, as some people call it. And then there is a non-singular property, some property of uh, separability and generating the sigma algebra, and also some regularity on, on the Jacobian of the transformation. That's the non-singular property is precisely saying that uh, the transformation needs to have some uh, Jacobian. So uh, these are the properties that we have seen defining, uh, defining uh, induced maps. And out of that, we could build, um, in particular, SRB measures for uh, maps in Riemannian manifolds, which admit uh, induced Gibbs-Markov maps. And our goal now is to deduce decay of correlations, still with this inducing scheme. And the idea is that, uh, so as I said, it's a general idea, but in practice we have to be, uh, well, we cannot uh, prove this result in, in general, but that, that's the idea behind. So the decay of correlations for, for the original system is essentially given by the decay of the, the, the tail of recurrence types. And we have introduced uh, space of holder continuous observables. And as I said, um, the, the idea for proving the decay of correlations is using an extension of the original, uh, original transformation. So extension means that there is a, a semi-conjugacy semi between uh, the original dynamical system and a new one that we are introducing. In fact, we have already introduced is the tower system and uh, extension in this sense. So uh, it semi-conjugates the, the two systems. So semi-conjugate is satisfying this conjugacy property, but not necessarily uh, being bijective. So can be, uh, actually it can be infinite to one, uh, countable to one. And uh, also uh, 
controversy in, in a, a measure theoretical sense, in the sense that the, the, the push forward of the measure in, in the new system is the, 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 the measure in the original one. Uh, the measure mu is the measure that comes from, from the inducing scheme. Uh, and if we are thinking of the, the application to uh, smooth uh, uh, maps with uh, in Riemannian manifolds, mu is the, the SRB measure, okay? So I'm saying that this extension we are going to build, so this is the goal, we are going to build, uh, gives, uh, so it's associated to the using scheme that gives the, the, the SRB measure. And so uh, the projection of uh, a natural measure in the tower, invariant measure will be the SRB measure. And this will be very helpful, this information. But there, there was this exercise showing that uh, the decay of correlations uh, can be, so whenever we have an extension, we have this relation. It's not specific of the extension we are going to, to build. This is always true. So the decay of, so the information is that the decay of correlation can be transported from the original system to the new one, which is the extension. And we also need, so this is a goal, we need a suitable space in the, in the new uh, dynamics uh, such that this holds. So if we, as I said, we are going to obtain the of correlations for a holder observables, phi and, and psi in, in, in our case, psi will be a, a, an essentially bounded map uh, observable. And, and so we need, we also need, so we need uh, these uh, three objects. So the, the, the space, so the transformation and the space, also the projection and the, the good set of observables, this set F. Okay, so we have already constructed, uh, this is the tower construction. So we have the, 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 the domain of induced map in the base of the tower. We have the, the return times and we build this object considering higher levels until we reach the recurrence time minus one in this way and described here. And the dynamics of new, this new transformation, I don't know why I'm just highlighting the first part, but. Okay, so this is the um, this is the, the new dynamics. So the dynamics uh, is only interesting when we reach the, the top, the roof of the tower. And in that moment, we come back to the base with with the induced map that we had before for the original uh, system. And for the other point, the dynamics is simply uh, simply going up. So it's a, a, a translation, an upward translation. Okay, and, and we can also easily define the, the, the projection, the, the, the semi-contiguity between uh, these new dynamics in this uh, new object, the tower, and the original one. So this is the, the, the projection. Uh, it's not difficult to see that the, this projection is measurable and satisfy the property that we need. Um, also, just a little remark, it, I will, it will be used today, uh, is that this tower construction can be made uh, with any map here, not necessarily induced one for a given dynamic. So you can put any map here, it gives Markov map, say, and you can consider the recurrence, any recurrence time provided it's constant uh, on the elements of the partition associated to the map. Okay, just, just a remark and the first conclusions hold, hold for tower construction in this more abstract way. Uh, so we have the levels, we introduce a reference measure in the tower. So we have the reference measure in the domain, in the base of the tower, which is the, the, in cases we are going to apply will be the Lebesgue measure in the domain we are inducing. And so the higher levels of the tower are copies of subsets of the base. And so we can naturally extend the sigma algebra and extend the, the reference measure. And we, we keep using the same, the same notation, the same letter for the, the, this reference measure M. So there's no confusion. We always know what is the object where we are referring. So there's no need of using distinct, distinct um, symbols. Uh, so uh, we introduce, and this will be the, the, the good space uh, that I have uh, just referred, that, that uh, if we consider holder continuous, then the composition with the projection will lie in this, in this space. We'll see this today. And this space is, is in some sense a space of holder continuous uh, maps. Uh, if you think, so we have a separation time, we, we, we extended the separation time to the tower. So we have the separation time for the, the Gibbs Markov map in the base. Uh, 
uh, separation time is the number, so given two point, the, the number of, of times they, they remain in the same uh, uh, in the same domains of the partition, and then we can extend it to to the whole tower. Essentially, if you take points in in higher levels, you bring them down, so they they have representatives in the in the the zero level, and is the separation time associated to those representatives. And if they lie in distinct uh, uh, elements of the partition of uh, distinct levels of, of the tower, we simply say that the separation time is zero. So separation time zero be, means points being far. So points with high separation times in some sense can be interpreted as points close to each other. And so this can be, so this condition can be uh, interpreted as um, Lipsits or holders. So the exponent here is not so important because we have a beta smaller than one. And so if you take a power of it, it's still a beta, beta prime smaller than one. So it's Lipschitz in some sense. So and we have the, the F plus, which is the, the those that are uniformly bounded from below as some positive constant. And we have this. Uh, so this is the maximum of the, of the Lipschitz constant and 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 the, the L1, uh, L infinity norm of phi, and also of uh, one over phi, or if you pre prefer a lower, this lower bound for phi. And uh, this is the, the last result we have seen um, in the first lecture, that towers, uh, they have a unique uh, invariant probability measure, which is absolutely continuous with respect to the reference measure. And moreover, uh, the density of this measure lies in this good space, so it's in a certain sense holder continuous, is bounded uniformly bounded away from zero. So in particular, the measure is equivalent to, to the reference measure. Also, uh, the measure is ergodic. This has a sense, well, the, the measure is essentially the, the measure we have in the base dynamics, the, the, the return to the, the base dynamic, which is given gives mark. And then it is essentially in the higher levels, again, is copies of the measure we have below. So it's naturally is, it will be ergodic, uh, but it actually has a stronger mixing properties depending uh, on the, the great, greater common divisor of the recurrence times. If it is one, uh, then the measure is actually exact and being exact is more, more than being mixing and more than being ergodic. Uh, actually, this is a sufficient condition to be to be exact and also uh, a necessary condition. Actually, I, I left this as an exercise that if the, the uh, great common greater common divisor of the R of the current times is bigger than one, then the, the map the, the tower system is not even mixing. So, in particular, it's not exact. And uh, the last good feature is that this projects to the for the cases we are interested in, this projects, this measure projects to the SRB measure of the system. As I said, to build the SRB measures, we don't need all this technology with towers. So the inducing schemes uh, are enough. Okay. So this was the last result we have seen. So let's go now. So our goal now is to introduce the space of observables. Uh, so the space of observables is, is already introduced. So is, is this F, uh, so this the space of, of holder continuous function, sorry, holder function in some sense in, in, the, um, in the tower, uh, this F betas. And we need uh, the relation that I, I, I said. So this, um, this relation here. But for this relation, so uh, we are going to consider a, a tower, the tower map. And as associated to a Gibbs mark in this map, but we need an extra assumption. We need this expansion property. Expanding maybe is not a good word. I use the word expanding because actually uh, we don't see much expansion here. But it, this is part of an expansion of an expanding condition for the diffeomorphism case and for coherence in the language. I also call it expand. So. Um, what is this expanding condition? This has to do, so assume now, so in particular, now uh, for the, the tower construction, we didn't need any metric in the space. So that can be defined in general. But now I need a, a metric. So assume that F is defined on a metric space. And, and in terms of applications, this, this is not much restrictive because we are going to apply this to, to 
maps on Riemannian manifolds. And so assume with that we have F defined on a metric space with a reference measure. And um, we say, and so assume that we have a, a, an induced map for, for the original one. And so we have a, a, a partition associated to it. And we say that this induced, induced map is expanding if there are constants for which this holds. So in particular, uh, this, uh, this says that if uh, the points are very close, uh, then the images are also close with respect to induced map. And we also have this control on, on, on the distance in between the, the initial time and, and the recurrence time. This is a condition, these are conditions that expanding maps have, but this is much more relaxed than just being, than being expanded, okay? Uh, and so, and, but these are conditions that we need to prove uh, uh, this conclusion, the conclusion that uh, the, the compositions of whole continuous observables with the projections, they lie in the good space of observables for the tower. Okay, so, um, let, let us, the proof of this is very simple. So I'm gonna show you the proof because you'll see where the, 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 this extra assumption is needed for not being so mysterious. So we need to show that this holds, so this condition holds. So this is the condition. Uh, see that uh, I've introduced F beta here, there's F beta to the power eta. Uh, eta is this exponent here, but this is still, so the important thing is that beta, the betas that we used in the space, the important thing is that, um, they are smaller than one. So if you take a power uh, with eta, uh, also of a power beta, then it's still uh, smaller than one. Actually, this eta will be smaller than one as well. But it's not important. So you take any power of a number smaller than one, it's still smaller than one. So we need to show this, okay? So this is the condition that defines the elements in this F uh, beta and beta eta uh, space. So uh, if uh, S, so if the separation time is equal to zero, uh, in particular, if they belong to distinct le levels of, of delta in the, in the way we have defined the separation time, then this is an easy consequence of the fact that, that the map is bounded, okay? So uh, consider now um, points in, in, in two points in, in the same level uh, with uh, separation time greater or equal to one. Uh, for this, they need to be in the same level, of course. Uh, so by definition, so by definition of the separation time, these points have representatives in the, in the base uh, level. So actually the point X, so I call the representatives X zero and Y zero. So the point uh, X is actually X zero comma L because they are in the L level. And this gives in particular, so, uh, so you have them in the alpha level. So you, you, you consider the representatives in the zero level. And so the, the recurrence time for these points, since uh, there is an alpha level above them, the re recurrence time must be bigger than that L. So this is by the way we have introduced the tau. Okay, so using that phi, so I'm going to use now that phi lies is, is a holder continuous map. So using this, well, first of all, I, 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 I'm replacing this by this because as I said, uh, the point X, according to the object we have introduced, the notation maybe is not the best one. So I, I'm using X for a point in the tower. So points in the tower have to coordinate. So have the, the coordinate uh, of the point in, in the base of the tower, which is associated is delta zero associated set delta zero associated to the uh, recurrence uh, so to the induced map, and they have a second coordinate which is from the tower. So X is a point of that type. So according to what we have said before, this X is um, is precisely X zero L, and the same for for Y, which is Y zero L. And so according to the definition of pi, we have this. So pi of this point is precisely this and the same for the other one. And so we have phi composed with FL of X zero bar. And so we can use the, the holder uh, semi-norm of phi times the distance to the power eta. So this is just the definition of, well, the definition of the space H 
uh, H eta. Okay, so this is the holder continuity. Well, since uh, now is the point where we assume expansion. So the idea is that we can, the problem is that we need to bring back the information to the tower system. And in the tower system, we don't have D. We, the D is essentially the, the separation time. So we need to bring the information back to the tower to conclude that it, the, the, the composition of the observable lies in the good space. And so to bring back that, that's the expand, expanding condition that I, I've put here. This is essentially that. So uh, now we know from, from the second condition that this is true. So this is the second part of the expanding condition. And now by the second part, we, we, we have that this uh, C, C distance is, is bounded by, C, well, C squared because there's a C. So we, we consider a common C there. So C here is always a big constant. And so we have this and the separation time for the first iterates by the induced map is, is, is the separation time for the points themselves minus one because this is separation with respect to the induced map. And so we have this and the separation time by definition of the points in the higher level is the separation time of the points in the base level. And so we have this. And so we deduce that we have this condition, which is precisely the condition we need to check to conclude that uh, uh, this, this holds five, this condition of five holds, okay? And so this is being in the, that space. So it's the conclusion of the lab. So we have proved uh, another part that I said would be important. So, um, so let, let us uh, recall what we have, make uh, the point of the situation. So at this point, we have the reduced the, the, the correlation problem. So we, 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 have, we have want to solve this correlation problem for these uh, dynamics, uh, F being uh, defined in a Riemannian manifold smooth uh, map, mu being an SRB measure. We will consider observables phi in, in the space of holder continuous maps, uh, psi in, in L infinity, and we have reduced the problem to the tower system because now I still call it phi. I'm not going to call it phi composed with pi, but uh, actually in practice it's phi composed with pi. So we want to, to obtain a result on decay of correlations for the tower system with a function observable in this space and the other one in this L infinity of the, M here is the, the, the measuring the tower. Well, it's, it's easy to see that the, if, if the, the psi in the original system is, is essentially bounded and psi composed with pi is essentially bounded as well. So we, we have this. So the problem of uh, the Kafka is for the original system is transported according to the exercises I left and the results before is transported to the tower system. So the question now is, what is the decay of correlation in the tower system? And here, uh, so these are the conditions. So assume we have a tower associated to a Gibbs Markov map with, uh, with integrable recurrence time. And let mu be the unique ergodic uh, absolutely continuous measure with respect to, to the reference measure. If the recurrence times, the greater common divisor is equal to one, then we have this, see that being equal, uh, equal the greater common divisor being equal to one is equivalent to say that the measure nu is exact. In particular, uh, it is mixing. And so um, the result is what I said, but in the concrete, so what I said is uh, the, the decay of correlations is essentially of the order of the recurrence times, but for specific cases. So if the, the, the recurrence times decay polynomially fast, then the decay of correlations is also polynomial. Well, we lose one unit. It's unavoidable to lose one unit in, the, in, the, in, the, in this. And if it's um, stretch exponential, but, but this exponent A can be equal to one. So if A is equal to one, then it's exponential. Uh, then the decay of correlations is of the same order. We change the C, uh, C changes, little c, changes to C prime, but it's not, it's not the important thing in terms of the, the rate. 
The important thing is the A, and it's the same A. Uh, the name of Guazal, so this, the original theorem is, is by Young, uh, and, but the problem is that in the stretched exponential case, she didn't obtain with the same A here, little a. She obtained with a, well, a, a slightly worse conclusion here with a different A, A prime. And then Guazelle improved that in, in, in the stretched exponential case to obtain this optimal uh, conclusion. But the ideas for, for the proof of, of this theorem that I'll, I'll give you later uh, are, are original, originally from, from Yang, and Guazelle only changed a, a certain part to, to obtain this uh, stretched exponential case. So this is the theorem uh, I want to talk about now to give you an idea of the proof of this theorem. So we have to reduce the, the problem of the correlation for the original system to the tower system. And for the tower system, we have these very nice conclusions. But before going to the proof of this um, the theorem, let me talk a bit on this assumption. So what is the idea? Uh, so the idea in practice, so to apply this theorem, so to apply this theorem, we have a, an original system. The idea is to find some good region in the phase space of the original system and inducing there. So inducing means we find a region, we find a partition of the set where we, we will be inducing and we associate to each element in the partition a certain uh, recur, uh, return time to that domain. In practice, uh, many of these constructions are uh, obtained in a certain existence, existence, uh, existential, sorry, existential way. So for instance, we know that the system has some expanding uh, behavior, non-uniform, for instance, we know that small dom domains grow to large scale. Then for some, you use some re uh, transitivity of the system. We, we bring that large domain to the domain we have initially. And we know that we can build a domain that comes and covers the initial, the, the, the region where we are inducing. So this is an idea that we use in, in some classes of systems. This existential argument, we cannot control the, the recurrence times. We know that there is some recurrence times for the domains, but we cannot control them in, 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 in such a way. It's not reasonable uh, to expect that we can control them in such a way, only in very specific cases, and we will see one today. But in general, we, we, with this existential argument, we cannot control the recurrence times. And so there's no hope for... So we can build the recurrence map with a good Gibbs Markov properties. We can build the tower, but there's no hope to expect from the constructions in general, we have a knowledge on the greater common divisor of the recurrence times. So this is a problem. This theorem is stated when the greater common divisor is equal to one. So what happens if it's not equal to one? Uh, can, we cannot say anything. Well, we can say something. And we have this uh, nice corollary. So the corollary is that we can decompose. So the conditions are essentially the same. The only condition that changes now is, is the, the greater common divisor. It's no longer one. So assume now is some positive integer greater than one. Then what we can conclude is that there exists for TK, so this is the kth power of the, the tower dynamics, there exists uh, invariant probability measures, nu one up to nu k, it's not k, it's tq. Uh, tq, there are invariant probability measures nu one up to nu q, uh, such that they, they form a cycle in the sense that when you iterate, so they are invariant for tq, but when you consider the push forward by t, the first one goes to the second one, the second one goes to the third one, and the one but last goes to the last one, and the last one goes to the first one. So we have a cycle. And the measure actually is the, the average of these measures, uh, which are invariant for TQ. So this is not difficult. In terms of the measure, it's, it's easy to, to obtain, and also for the conclusion of the decay of correlation. So this actually will be a corollary of the, of the theorem that I've just stated. And, and for the decay of correlations, 
Well, we have the same conclusion. So assuming recurrence times polynomial, we have conclusion, but now for the measures associated to TQ, okay? For these measures, new one up to new Q, okay? And also for the stretch exponential case and in particular for the exponential case. And a brief idea of the proof of this uh, corollary. Well, the idea is that we can decompose the tower so consider Q the greater common divisor of the, the recurrence times and consider, so think for instance that the, the Q is equal to two. So it means that when you start to build a tower, there are no L, there, there is uh, no elements returning in time one. So see if there are multi, multiple of two, so there are no uh, time, uh, points returning in time one. So there is a, there is a, so there are no points uh, for the tower. There are no points uh, that uh, in the base that return to the base in the first iterate. So there is a second, there's another level above the, the, the base. And so we can consider these levels uh, mod Q. And so we can, we can see some sub towers. And, and uh, so that, that's what I, I define here. These are the, the upsilon eyes. And if you define this uh, in this way, then we have this, this cycle for them. And since uh, new as invariant measure, we can decompose new in this way. So as I said, for the, for the measures, the part of the measure, this is very, very simple. And for the other part, it's not complicated as well. So it's one more slide. And so we, we, we decompose them in this way. And it's easy to see that uh, decomposing in this way, we have this uh, required relation. And also, uh, note also that these measures are absolutely continuous with respect to reference measure according to the way they are defined because new is absolutely continuous with respect to it. So this, this is for, for the measures and for the, the, um, the conclusions on the decay of correlations. What we do, and this is the point where, where I use the remark on the tower construction. So consider now a, a, a tower construction associated to the same map. So this gives mark of map, but now not with the recurrence times R, but the recurrence times R prime, which are the R's divided by Q. So they are still constant in the elements of the partition. And see that since, uh, since Q is the greater common divisor of the R's, this is still, these are still integer, positive integer numbers. So, and as I, as I have, I have observed um, the, the tower construction can be performed. So since these R primes are still constant in the elements of the partition of the Gibbs Markov map F power R, this, um, the tower construction can also be performed in this case. And so this new tower by, the theorem uh, that we have seen on the existence of, of uh, equilibrium measure. So also has a probability measure. And now this measure for the new tower is exact because, or if you prefer the great common divisor of the R uh, primes now is equal to one because this is equivalent. And now we have, uh, it's very easy to define a, a semi-conjugacy between uh, the tower Q, so the iterate, the Q, Q iterate uh, restricted to those upsilon i's and the, this new tower here. Uh, this is just formalism, but we could also think directly in the Q tower. So we have this, this measure, so thinking of the way we have defined the, these upsilon i's as, uh, equivalence classes associated with the composition uh, to congruence of, of with Q, um, we, we easily see that this is a, a bimeasurable conjugacy. So, bimeasurable, actually, th this uh, sends levels to levels uh, uh, directly by the identity in, in the first coordinates of these towers. So the only difference is in the second one. So it's clearly bimeasurable. And so using that, and, and so we have that since uh, new prime is an exact measure here, then the push forward of it will be an exact measure in, in the other system. But now since uh, SI and SI minus one preserve sets with me zero measure, 
And we know that uh, uh, new I is a, not new I, new prime is absolutely continuous with respect to, to, Lebesgue, to the reference measure. And then we, we use the inverse push forward and we obtain this, this relation that this inverse push forward is absolutely continuous uh, with respect to, to Lebesgue measure. Then uniqueness, because now this line, that, so this measure is in the tower T, T prime. Uh, uniqueness of the measure gives that this is true. And so new i is exact. So that's the way we obtain the, the exactness of the measure. So we obtain the decomposition, the exactness, and, uh, and so uh, we have this. So this is the decay, the decay of correlations is, uh, the decay of correlations, there's nothing to be proved because this tower now is uh, in the conditions of, of the tower uh, with GDC GCD equal to, to one, okay? So, uh, but we want to go back to the original dynamics. Well, this is a natural consequence because we have a semi-conjugacy of the, the, the original dynamics and the tower system. And so this is the, the conclusion uh, uh, for uh, having the semi-conjugacy. We can pass the measures that we have in the tower to measures uh, consider push forwards by the semi-conjugacy to measures in the original system. There's only a, a subtle thing here that I'm going to highlight here. Is So this Q is the Q for the tower. So if there was, uh, so this, there is this uh, uh, P here and see that the number of measures is P, is not Q anymore. So you may ask me why this P? Well, this, this has to do with the fact that the, the projection pi is not one to one. So there might, might be measures in the tower, those new eyes, that since the, 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 the pi is not injected, it can happen that two measures go to the same one. So we obtain the number of measures in the original system is a number which is uh, bounded from above the number of the measures that we have in the tower, okay? So we can prove this, it's, it's not difficult to prove this. I'm not going to to show you that, but uh, it's not, not difficult to, to obtain this. This is, well, I didn't put the reference uh, uh, to my book, but uh, this is done with all, in, in all details in, in the book. So we obtain this conclusion with this, uh, with this peculiar fact that the number of measures is not exactly the number of iterates that we need for the dynamics to obtain uh, these measures. And, um, we have this uh, conclusion as well. So this is essentially the fact that the decay of correlations in the, 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 the extension is the same of the decay of correlation in the original system. But in practice, again, this is not very interesting. Well, this is interesting, but uh, what, uh, so as I said, expecting this, expecting that the great common divisor, greater common divisor is equal to one is not very reasonable. So we can, so using this result, we can never assure that we have the K of correlations for the original dynamics. It's all, always for a power. So the question is, is there any condition that we can impose to the original system uh, such that in the end we can conclude? Of course, there is this condition. Assume that the greater common divisor is equal to one, but this is somewhat uh, a fake condition because this greater common divisor appears when we construct something associated to the original dynamics. So is there any condition that a priori we can give on the original dynamics in such a way that um, we can assure the decay of correlations, not for powers of the dynamics, but or, I mean, for Q equal to one. And there is there, there are some conditions. One of them is, is stated here. So let, uh, so let we have an, a, 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 a dynamics such that, well, it's reasonable. So the push forward of the re reference measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the reference measure. And this is a condition that I also imposed here. So this is uh, needed uh, to deduce the existence of invariant measure from the uh, inducing scheme. So that's a condition that we have been considering since the last, the first uh, lecture. So uh, assume that, and now we have uh, an inducing scheme. And we know that uh, this inducing scheme has uh, a unique ergodic f invariant probability measure, giving positive weight to the region where we induce. 
And the extra condition is this one. So let me, oops, oops, oops. I've highlighted too much. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the other way around. So the extra condition is this one. If this measure is ergodic for all powers, and this is not difficult to check in many situations, uh, in many concrete examples, then we conclude the decay of correlations for the original system. That's what we have here. The decay of correlations for the original system. Even if uh, we have uh, the inducing scheme with the greater common divisor equal uh, to some Q bigger than one, then the decay of correlations, well, uh, the proof is, 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 the idea of the proof is very simple. And uh, I'm fighting here with these highlights. Okay, now I've undone this. So consider uh, measures as in the theorem, okay? And uh, it's simply using this very simple fact that I guess most, most of you pr probably know is that if we have, I leave this as an exercise for those who don't know this, it's a simple exercise. Assume that we have uh, invariant measures in such a way that uh, new, new one and new, new zero, such the way that new one is absolutely continuous with respect to new zero and new zero is ergodic. Well, then, then they are equal. So using this fact, uh, we can prove that, uh, uh, so see that uh, mu is ergodic for FQ. That's the assumption we have from the, the theorem. Uh, then necessarily uh, the mu i's that are absolutely continuous with respect to, to mu, the way we construct, they are restrictions to some subsets. Uh, then we obtain the conclusion for, so from the theorem we will have here, instead of mu, we will have nu i. But by the exercise, nu i coincides with mu. And so we obtain this decay of correlation. Well, you may say, well, but you still have q. But the advantage now, the problem, actually the problem here is not the q. The problem here is the mu i's, is not mu. Because for the Q, we can solve very easily the problem. So assume now, so now we have the, de good, the decay of correlation for mu because we conclude that the measures are equal. Uh, this is because uh, we are assuming that mu is ergodic for all powers. So this, this is the extra assumption, okay? Uh, and now we have the decay of correlations for mu, still with the power Q. But now we can apply, so we want, to have this uh, for, for psi here. And uh, we can apply this uh, to, instead of psi, you can apply to psi composed with F, psi up to psi composed with F composed with Q minus one. And when you, so if you apply this to all of this, you obtain the decay of correlations for F because you obtain for the multiples of, of Q, multiples of Q plus one, multiple, ah, and so you obtain the decay of correlations for F. So this is a simple exercise as well. Okay, so the, the problem is the measure in, in, in the theorem here is being new i, and that can be solved adding this extra assumption that uh, all powers of F are ergodic with respect to, to mu. In my book, I have also uh, uh, some extra assumptions which are uh, topological and which are very helpful in some concrete examples that we can add to the system and to the original system, uh, not the powers FN. So uh, there are several conditions that can be added in order to assure the decay of correlations for F and, and the, the, the reference and, and the, the, the SRB measure in the cases of smooth maps themselves, not powers of the system. Okay, so uh, let's go back. So this to say that uh, once we have the decay of correlations for the towers, so these are the two results for the towers, we have the decay of correlations for the original system stated in this way. So the question now is, what is the decay of correlation? How can we prove the decay of correlations for the tower, the, 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 the theorem of Young and, and, and Guizel? Uh, so let us go back to the tower. So now we'll be restricted to the tower. Uh, so, uh, let us sketch the proof of that theorem. And I'm 
in, in four lectures, I could not give you full details for the proof. I, I, but at these levels, for many courses of this type, is not reasonable given all details. I'm, going, I'm just going to give you some ideas of, of the proof. So um, we'll, we'll start with. So the idea is to, to obtain decay of correlations for observables in this space and for psi, uh, for psi in L infinity. So that's what we want. Uh, this space lies in L infinity of M. So for, for a function, I define this concept in, in, in general. Uh, for a function in L infinity that is not zero, we define this, we associate the new function, which is this pi star. Uh, so what is this? Well, this is made for this new phi star to be strictly positive. So when we add to a function two times the infinity norm, this function will be strictly positive. And then uh, we integrate with respect to new this uh, function and divide by one over, so we divide, divide by that integral. In this way, we have that the integral, so that's what is said here. So the uh, phi star is strictly positive and the integral with respect to nu is equal to one, okay? So uh, the idea is to reduce the proof of the decay of correlations theorem, that's it, to convenient estimates for this. What is this? So uh, this is, um, I didn't say uh, what is uh, lambda. Lambda will appear here. So lambda is actually, it's defined here. Lambda is actually, uh, uh, a measure, a positive measure, whose uh, density with respect to, to nu, uh, nu is the measure in the tower, okay, is the natural uh, measure, invariant measure in the tower, whose density is that phi star. So, and this is the notation for the total variation of the difference measure. So the difference measure is not necessarily a positive measure, it's a sign measure, and there's a notion of total variation for measure theory, and this is the notation so here uh, is the notation for total variation, okay? Of that difference there. So the idea now is to reduce the proof of the decay of correlate of the theorem on decay of correlations to uh, essentially the rates in the decay of correlation will be the rates at which uh, we'll have, we'll see that these iterates of measures like this will converge to the, the measure new in the sense of their variation, the variation of the difference is converging to zero, and the rate of the decay of correlation is related to the rate at which this converges to zero. So that's the idea. And this is uh, exactly stated in, 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 in this uh, lemma here. So for all um, phi, uh, which is not zero, that's the ones we have defined phi star, we have this conclusion, well, this, this is very simple. So what is important is that it's bounded away from zero and infinity. And we have this nice conclusion, the decay of correlations, this is the decay of correlation that we want to estimate, is bounded by some constant. And actually the constant here is the, 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 the um, L infinity norm of the observables and times this uh, total variation of these measures of the difference measure, where lambda is, the, as I said before, is the probability measure whose density is phi prime. So there's a relation, of course, between this measure lambda and the observables. In fact, the observable uh, phi, phi, phi star, which is related to phi. Um, okay, uh, so this, this lemma is, is very easy to prove. So we have, the, well, the first part is a straightforward calculation. So let, let's go. So let's go to the, the second part, which is the more interesting. So um, th there's a conclusion. The first part, I'm sorry, is that it lies in the good space uh, of observables. Uh, in particular, it's positive, and that's why lambda is a measure. Um, it's positive is, is easy. I've already seen, and it, that it lies in in the space of. Uh, hold the function say it, it, it's also a simple calculation oh when i select it all okay okay this is not very efficient my pdf viewer is not the best one. Oh no <laughs> okay let's forget that part 
So let's go to the decay of correlations. So the correlation is this by definition. And uh, if you, this is the multiple that distinguishes uh, phi and phi star up to a adding a constant, there's a multiple, so let's, let's see it. So uh, phi star is phi plus some constant and this multiple. So the constant is not important is in the integrals because they cancel the constants. And so we can translate the, the correlation with respect to phi to the correlation with respect to phi star modulo this constant. So it's easy to see. And then, um, well, phi, phi star times d nu is precisely d lambda according to the way we have defined lambda and that's the next transformation. And see, this is equal to one. So that's why it disappears. So phi star has been built in such a way that this is equal to one. And so we have this. And so phi disappear. Well, of course, the price is that appears this new measure lambda. But now we can write this. Well, this is measure theory. You can write this integral as this integral here. And so we have this, the integral of the same constant with respect, difference with respect to these two measures. And this is bounded precisely by the, the infinity norm of, of the, the function times the, the total variation of the difference measure. So this is standard uh, measure theory. So observe, observing, so there's still this annoying A here, but A is, is easily seen to be bounded by three times the, the infinity norm of phi. And so we obtain the lemma. So this is a very nice lemma, which reduces the study of the decay of correlations to the study of certain, um, of a total variation of a, a certain sign, sign measures going to zero, the speed at which it goes to zero. And so the, our uh, theorem on decay of correlation is a consequence of this theorem. So that's precisely what we want to obtain. So if the, the, the tail of recurrence times decays polynomially fast, then the total variation decays polynomially fast in the relation we, we need. And the same for, for uh, stretch exponential uh, decay. And there's this remark on the constants. And this will be useful later in the diffeomorphism case. So keep in mind that uh, in the decay of correlations or this, this mass, actually this total variation going to zero, there's some uh, dependence on the constant, which is good. So this only depends because there are objects that the tower and which are constructed and this constant might be depending, uh, could be depending on, on, on constants related to the construction. But no, they, they essentially depend on the observable phi. Okay, this is the good news and this will be useful later. Uh, so this is the deep uh, Yen theorem. Um, so she uses uh, a coupling, she used the coupler, coupling argument in, in this paper to, to prove this, this, um, this theorem here. And so the coupling uh, argument is based on a careful study of returns to the base of the, of the tower. This coupling argument, coupling exists in abstract probability theory and she re realized that she could bring those ideas to this uh, dynamical system context. That was uh, her idea. Uh, let me say that there are, in some sense, this, this result here is optimal. There are infinite, actually infinitely many probability measures for which uh, this happens here. So this is saying that if the tail decays at one of these speeds, essentially this is the conclusion is optimal in this sense. So there are measures for which we have the reverse inequality. Okay. And so, in, but usually uh, see that if this decays, uh, this is optimal in, in the sense that if, if, for instance, decays polynomial with uh, minus zeta, then this series is of order minus zeta plus one, which is precisely what we have here, okay? And for exponential or stretch exponential, this series is of the same order here. And so uh, some order above here. And so it says that the estimates of the theorem are optimal. 
So given any measure lambda, so it's always possible to obtain measures for which we cannot achieve better than these conclusions. Um, so let, let me give you a brief idea on this, um, on this, um, of, of the proof of this, of this theorem. I was looking to the time, oh, we still have a lot of time. <laughs> I was worried because I thought it was two years, two, <laughs> two hours, that, but we have only one hour, of course. Uh, so let me give you an idea of this coupling argument. So uh, consider, uh, so we want, we want to see, sorry, going above. We want to see iterates of uh, measures, lambda, in, such a way that this holds, and new here is fixed. Well, new is also a measure whose density lives in this space. So, uh, but uh, so we can think more generally. Instead of, of new, we could take uh, any, any other measure lambda uh, lambda prime for which new is an example, because if you take any other measure and, and t star n of that any other measure new new can be obtained as a particular case simply uh, because uh, new is invariant for t so this is to say that instead of that quantity because i didn't write it here it would be easy let me show you what i want to say so i want to estimate this and once uh, we estimate this we apply to lambda prime equal to new and this push forwards within you so as simple as this so this is the problem of not having a pen to write in the slides. If it were in the blackboard, it would be easy to say. So that's why I, I had to go forward and then come back. Okay, so we are going to consider naturally uh, a more general problem for which our problem will be a particular case. So consider, uh, so these measures with densities in the good space here, uh, and consider now the product, uh, the product map of the tower. And consider the product measure, P is equal to lambda lambda prime. And consider pi, uh, well, pi and pi prime here is not, well, unfortunately that's what I have here. It should be some different letter because we have already a pi. Pi is a projection from the tower to the original space, but forget that pi. Now pi and pi prime, pi prime are the projections on the first and second factors of this product, okay? The other pi does not appear anymore because we have reduced the problem to the tau already. So, uh, so we have this product, we have the partitions, we have this uh, product measure, which is invariant for the product and consider also the partition, uh, the product partition. So, the product partition associated to the original partition that we have. So the, the, the Q is the letter for the, the natural partition, the tower. So now we consider the product partition in the product. And consider the push forwards, so the dynamical refinements of, the, of this initial partition and we use uh, indexed by N. So uh, I, I will also, also use this notation. So, the partition N uh, in this point is precisely the element of the partition that contains the point. And see that we are proving the theorem uh, in which we assume this condition, okay? Uh, because the, uh, the general case has been reduced, has been proved uh, using this, this case. So if this holds, then new is exact. And so in particular, it is mixing. So using that, uh, new is bounded, we find infinitely many moments such that, uh, first of all, uh, this returns to the base. So uh, infinitely many moments such that uh, we have points in the base return to the base. Well, that is natural. But the, the, the good information now is that the measure of that is bounded from below. Well, this is essentially Burke of theorem. Uh, if you consider here uh, the new measure, because uh, then uh, is a, a constant. It's not Burke of theorem. Sorry, is a consequence of mixing. Is a, sorry, is a consequence of mixing. If you put here the new measure, 
is essentially a consequence of mixing. Uh, then, since the density is bounded from below, you can you can tra transport the information to the M measure. Okay. So uh, consider now. So this information will be important with respect to the M measure. So consider now uh, 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 an R, a time R uh, hat, which is defined everywhere in the tower. So this is not the recurrence time because recurrence time was for the base. So for points in the base, it's defined only there. So for points in the base is the time you, you, you need to go up in the tower and then come back. And I'm going to define, uh, this is the entrance, uh, the heating time in, in the base of, of the tower. So is, is the minimum that the point needs to get to the, the base of the tower, okay? Can be seen as the heating time, the time I need to go to the base of the tower. This is the R hat. And now we introduce a sequence of stopping times in the two uh, uh, variables, X and X prime. First, I start with the, the first one. So first of all, I'm, I'm going to consider some large moment. So, uh, we consider the, so given a point X, X prime in, in the tower, we consider this is essentially the, the heating time of the first one. So you consider the first time you return to the base, but you don't take exactly that. You, you have to assure that you have at least N zero iterates. Why that to use this, this information here in a certain moment, this information is important. And then you consider, so now you have defined tau one, and then you refine tau two is the moment that you return to the base with the second variable, always uh, assuring a, a sufficiently large number of iterates in between, and so on. So then you go to the second one. So this allows us to consider uh, simultaneous return times. So the simultaneous return time is, is the minimum. So given any two points, you consider the minimum such that both are in, in the base, okay? And uh, a simple exercise is that, I guess you all know this, if the dynamics is mixing, then the product is mixing. It's not true that if it's ergodic, then the product is ergodic. So uh, in particular, uh, so we have that the dynamics is mixing. So it's mixing, in particular, it's ergodic, okay? This is to say that I could not simply assume that T nu is ergodic to deduce that T, the product is ergodic. And so since it is ergodic, here is the point where I go, it was in my mind before, uh, since uh, new, uh, so since this system is ergodic, and the density uh, is bounded from below with respect to the, this product uh, measure here, we, we can assure that uh, um, this S is well-defined almost everywhere. So this to say that uh, almost all points have simultaneous returns to the base and returns to the base um, with a certain uh, distance between two consecutive uh, returns. And, um, so now, before we go to the calculation in a simple case, uh, now we have uh, this, uh, we have, this is just a remark that according to the way we have the refer, uh, defined the, the recurrence times, essentially they are constant. This is because these recurrence times, they are defined and they are constant in elements of the partition. So if the, the, this um, simultaneous re return to the base is and then it's constant in the elements of the partition. And actually it's a full branch in a certain sense. So the, the, the element of the partition by the same iterate covers uh, the base. Of course, now is base times base, okay? Let us uh, see now. So we have introduced this new dynamical system. So the product dynamical system, T times T. And uh, we have introduced a certain, uh, special times, which are the simultaneous return to the base. Let us, so what comes next is where the, the big uh, complication appears. So, uh, and I'm not going to give you uh, many details on that, uh, but I can give you an idea of the, the whole construction in 
under a, a simplified assumption. What is the simplified assumption? Assume that the Jacobian of the, the tower uh, map, uh, see that the tower map is, uh, when you return to the base, is the Gibbs Markov map, so which has a Jacobian. And for the other points, when you go up, uh, is essentially translating upward. So it also has a Jacobian, which is actually constant one. Okay, so the whole tower map has a Jacobian. Assume the Jacobian, so Jacobian uh, has bounded distortions by what I have said. So it has, it, it is one when you go up and when you return is the Jacobian of the, the Gibbs Markov map. And we know that this is one of the properties of Gibbs Markov is the Gibbs property. It has bounded distortion. So in some sense, bounded distortion is nearly uh, constant in some sense. So let's assume it's constant, not nearly constant, but constant. It simplifies, it somewhat simplifies the conclusions. And assume also that uh, the densities, the densities also live in a, a good space in that uh, kind of colder space. In some sense, they are also nearly uh, constant and assume that they are also constant. So we make, making this simplification, uh, we can uh, estimate what we want in a simple way. <clears throat> so what is this? Well, it's not difficult to see. Well, uh, using, uh, so we have the products. See that uh, this is, uh, we want to estimate this. And this is with respect to T, not the product. But we have the project. So this is the project in the first coordinate. This is the project in the second coordinate, taking into account that P is the product of lambda, lambda prime. It's not difficult. It's straightforward calculation to see this first equality. When it's an equality, usually it's not difficult. The problem is when it's inequality. Uh, well, this is not the case of the first one. The first one is very simple. So look at these measures here. So we have these two measures, this one and this one here. And uh, we decompose the, the whole space. So this is a measure defined in, in, in the product space, uh, delta times delta. We, defi we decompose the space into the part where the simultaneous return is, or the heating time is bigger than N. And you consider the other, the other points where the simultaneous return is an I ranging from one to N, okay? So the union of all these sets is clearly the whole uh, space delta times delta. And so what I do is simply uh, plugging a union here and uh, writing as a sum and then using uh, triangle inequality, okay? So we have the part of the measure above restricted to the set of points where the simultaneous returns or turns to the base or hitting times in the base uh, is bigger than uh, I. And then the, the sum of the other points where they are a certain I ranging from one to N. And then uh, using these equalities that I'm highlighting now, we can easily deduce that we have this. So this is again an equality, we have this. So this is the first part. I didn't change the first part. So here is the same. What we changed was here in this part here. So in this part, I'm highlighting now, we have changed and we have this and the reason is because of this. But now, so let's look at these uh, terms here. So I have T star, so T star N minus I, and then it's because of this relation here. I put this in evidence and I have this difference here. So let's look at these differences here. We are going to see that this is zero. Of course, under this, uh, in this case is zero. So uh, this part, I'll leave as an exercise to show that this is equal to this. This is essentially using the fact that distortion is, is one and so we have this. And, and see that once you prove that this is equal to this, See that this is symmetric in, in X and X prime. Uh, and so since this is, this part is not because here I have P, pi and here on this, on the other side I have pi prime. But since this is symmetric, when you make the calculation on the other side, you obtain the same quantity. And so this uh, pi prime of this push forward is equal to pi 
of the same push forward. And so that's why we have this part here equal to zero. Okay, so this disappears. So the term in the summation here above, this term disappears. And so this is the, the one that counts. And it's not difficult to see that it essentially depends on uh, the, 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 the mass uh, of uh, P of uh, this uh, set of points, uh, simultaneous return time bigger than N. So we can make this uh, estimate here. So taking, as I said, taking lambda prime equal to nu, we, we, we have this. And so we obtain an estimate for what we want, but now in terms of this. So we have reduced now to, to P. P is the probability uh, lambda times lambda prime uh, uh, of this S bigger than N. So the, the estimate for the, the simultaneous returns on both variables, and this is the coupling, this is the matching argument, okay? And we have this, uh, these lemmas which finish the proof and whose proofs I'm, I'm not going to give. Uh, this is where the complication appears. But uh, in general, so under the simplifying assumption, we arrive to this conclusion. With, without the simplifying assumption, on, on the simplifying assumption was assuming lambda number prime are constant uh, and that the, the um, also the, the Jacobian of the, of the tower is constant. If it's not, an extra term appears. So they are not constant, but they are uh, bounded. They live in some good, sp a good space of, of densities in the case of densities. And also the Jacobian, we can prove that also lives in a good space. And due to that, we can prove this. And so uh, looking at, at this, we see that, uh, we see that uh, first uh, there's another lemma and this is the final uh, lemma. So if the recurrence times, uh, decay polynomially fast, also the, the simultaneous returns, they decay polynomially fast. And if they decay uh, exponential or stretch exponentially fast, then the same holds here. And so uh, above, yeah. going above, plug in above, that's what I want. So plug in above. We have good estimate for this, good in terms of Young theorem. And also good in this, well, this is somewhat complicated, but see that if, if this part decays polynomially fast, uh, this part is exponential. Well, we can see well, because uh, the polynomial is, is down, is, is polynomial in I, so we can prove that if this series decays, it's not so complicated, it's a calculus, calculus uh, exercise. It's not so complicated to see that if, uh, uh, these terms decay polynomially fast, then this series decays polynomially fast. And if the decays exponential or stretch exponentially fast, then this series decays stretch exponential or exponentially fast in N, okay? And so this concludes the proof. Of course, here is the, the part where the most, the most technical part of, of the argument and several pages are needed to prove these lemmas. But this is the rough idea of, of all this tower construction and the coupling argument. Okay, and so uh, I'm gonna give you a simple application of these uh, results. Simple application, uh, of, so we'll have a system uh, for which we can build uh, an inducing scheme. The inducing scheme, so we have uh, an induced Gibbs-Markov map so it has the good properties that uh, we, we need. And so we can deduce the existence of uh, uh, an SRB measure for, for the original system and also deduce the K of correlations. Uh, these are the intermittent maps. So this kind of uh, systems uh, was firstly considered by Pomo and, and Manville in the transition phenomenon to turbulence in convective fluids. Many people since then has considered this kind of system to deduce uh, in slightly different situations, existence uh, of, uh, of uh, SRB measures or a fluid continuous invariant. This is one dim dimension of dynamical system and uh, decay of correlations and many other properties for this kind of, this is a, a very inspiring example where we have polynomial um, estimates. 
So uh, in the approach, I, I will, in fact, I, I'm going to give you two examples. The first one, it, the calculations are essentially the same up to a certain point. In the second one, uh, it's a bit more complicated, the final step, but I, I'm going to present the simplified version and then tell you how to obtain the other one. Uh, the advantage of the second one is that then we can generalize to diffeomorphisms and we can, uh, for instance, go into the, the solenoid construction. Uh, so solenoid co construction, uh, I've mentioned in, in the first lecture, is a skew product where we have an expanding map in the base dynamics and we have the contraction in, in, the, in the solid torus in the, the, uh, the, the orthogonal directions. And um, if you change, we can change the, the base dynamics. So in the base dynamics, I use 2x mode one, the doubling map. If we change to one of these dynamics, we obtain a very interesting uh, solenoid with intermittency. And that's the advantage. So essentially uh, the, the two examples that differ uh, in, the, in, the, in the set we define them. So in the first one is an interval map. The second one is a circle map. In a circle map, uh, we need to approach from both sides the fixed point. And so we need uh, uh, to control on both, on both sides. And that's why we have some extra work. In the, in, the, in the first example, in the interval map, I will only consider one side of the fixed point. And so uh, the work is, is simplified. And there are examples also by other people, and in particular, skew product uh, on the square by Basun, Bose, and, and, and one. So, and, and many other people have studied these examples. So uh, this is the example that people, uh, um, this is uh, due to Liverani, uh, so sol invariant, and many people refer to it as, as the LSV example. So how is it defined? Well, it's defined very easily. So you consider this, the interval zero, one, and you can see the two X minus one in, in, today I'm having problems with highlights. Uh, okay. So it's two X mode one on, on the, the right-hand side. And on the other side is not no longer two X mode one for otherwise we will have the doubling map. What we do see uh, the doubling map, we have uh, derivative two in the fixed point zero. What we do is to transform is keeping derivative bigger than one everywhere, but at the point zero where we put derivative equal to one. So that's what happens when you consider this expression. And that's the advantage of this uh, uh, system introduced by uh, uh, Liver uh, Liverani, Sosol, and Vianti. So we have this, this expression. Um, and as I said, it's, it's, if you want to transform this into a smooth map in the circle, C1, at least C1 map in the circle, you also have to, to make some damage on, on the, in the point. So assuming zero is identified in one, you also need some damage in the fixed point one, uh, the way you approach here, for otherwise you don't have it uh, differentiable at, at the point zero or one, which are identified. Okay, so that's the extra complication. So note that this function is C2 uh, if alpha is greater or equal to one. It's, it's simply looking at that expression. And is uh, C1 plus alpha uh, for uh, alpha strictly smaller than one. In particular, uh, and this is the best we can say. So it's C1 plus alpha. In these cases also, when it's C2 is alpha C, also C1 plus plus alpha, but I'm saying it's, it's not better than this. So this is the best we can achieve for alpha smaller than one. And so we have this very nice conclusion. So for alpha smaller than one, uh, the map F has a unique SRB measure mu. Moreover, the, the measure mu is exact, more than ergodic. The support of it coincides with the whole interval. Well, this is not not difficult to imagine why this is true because it's an ex essentially expanding map. Uh, it's basin covers M almost every point. So the basin of the SRB measure, which is a physical measure. That's why I talk about basin. And for each holder continuous map and, and psi observable, we have this decay of correlation. So the decay of correlation is, is, is this one. See that uh, for uh, alpha smaller than one, uh, n to the power, uh, so alpha minus one, 
So we, we have uh, this decay of course. So alpha minus one is, is smaller than zero. And so we have this uh, uh, decay into zero. Okay, so we have this relation between the exponent and the decay of curlage. And there are results which say that this is the best we can achieve in this situation. Uh, results doing to who and who as well say that this is the best we can achieve. And interesting conclusion is for alpha greater or equal to one. So uh, the, this duality alpha smaller than one, a, alpha greater or equal to one is qualitatively in, 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 can be interpreted in the following way. Alpha greater or equal to one means the tangency here at the point zero is very big. The tangent, so the, the graph uh, tangent to the, the diagonal. If uh, alpha is smaller than one, the graph is tangent, but the tangency is not so strong. That's the difference of uh, qualitative difference of these two alphas. And so if the tangency, that's what it says, if the tangency of the graph to the diagonal is, 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 is strong, then the Dirac measure at the point zero is the physical measure, is a physical measure, and its basin covers almost all points in the interval. So what does it mean? Well, it means that the, the, the almost all points are spending most of the time close to zero. So this is due to the fact, heuristically, is due to the fact that uh, points uh, come close to zero, and since the the graph is, is tangent in a strong sense, tangent to, to the diagonal, it takes a lot of time to go away from zero. And so the fact that it takes a lot of time to escape from zero makes the Dirac measure at zero, the physical measure of the system. So let me brief you, briefly give you uh, an idea of the proof of uh, these two conclusions. So I start with local behavior and I, I, I'm, uh, I'm rephrasing, not rephrasing, but putting in a more general uh, uh, way the, what is important in this system. So we have this system here, and, and the important information is stated here in, in conditions C1, C2, and C3. So this is the local behavior in zero. Local here is, is from zero to, to one half. I, I define Z0 as one half. And the local behavior is the, is the following one. So this is for deducing uh, similar conclusions uh, in the circle transformation that I'm, I will consider as well. So the, the so the important information is zero is a fixed point and derivative in zero is one. Also derivative is bigger than one everywhere out of zero. Well, and, and out of one half because it's not smooth in this case. Uh, and F is C2 out of these two points. And, uh, and we have this order for the second derivative. Well, a uh, simple calculus exercise. So using this and this and integration, uh, fundamental theorem of calculus, we can deduce these two conclusions. So F prime minus one is of order X to the alpha and F minus X is of order X alpha plus one. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And so with these orders, we can uh, uh, have some uh, useful conclusion. And essentially is, is these, these orders that, uh, that uh, we use. So we don't use specific, uh, that specific uh, 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 form of, for the map uh, on zero, one half. Um, define this sequence of points. So you take the point one half here, and consider, I'm considering the pre-images of it. So see that the iterate of Z2 is Z1, Z1 is Z0, and so on. So we consider this infinite sequence. And uh, what we have is that the, this sequence uh, is converging to zero, of course, and has the same asymptotics of this sequence here, one over one to the one over alpha, and to the one over alpha, okay? So we have this um, estimate. So uh, having the same asymptotics means that it's bounded from above and below by constant times this one over n to the one over alpha. Uh, this is proved in, in, in my book uh, and also in the paper of, of Yang. And the proof only uses this information, <clears throat> the C1 up to C3. Okay, so 
This allows us to introduce uh, an induced map. And uh, so first I introduce a sequence of intervals. So I call uh, J0, the interval from uh, one half to one. So this is, a, I'm going to introduce a, a, a mode zero partition of the whole interval zero one. See, uh, here I'm going to induce in the full interval zero, zero one. Uh, see, that it's possible. So I said uh, when I was, telling you in the beginning, uh, we are going to induce, take some region in the phase space. The region here will be the, the whole phase space I, okay? So we can induce in the full space. So take J0, uh, the, the interval one half one, and then use the, 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 the Zs, uh, Zn, Zn minus one to define the Jn. So here uh, is, is Z0 uh, to Z1 is J1 and J2 and so on, okay? And it follows from the lemma that uh, the measure, so we, we have an estimate for the, the this Zn, so we have an estimate for the length of these intervals. And so it's of this order. And now we refine, so I'm going to induce in the whole interval a new map. So what is this new map? On J0 is the, the map that we have initially. So I take the iterate in J0, I take the iterate one, so for n equal to zero. This is one. And so the red, so the new map is red, the, the, the initial map is in blue. So the red here coincides with the blue. In J1, I, I take two uh, iterates. So see that when I iterate J1, so the, the, the le leftmost point, it goes to the rightmost point. And the rightmost point is, a, is, is Z0, it goes to one. So what happens is that uh, J1 goes to uh, J0 in one iterate. In the second iterate, it goes to the whole interval. So in two, in two iterates, it goes and bijectively, that's important for the induced maps to be, to be Gibbs Markov. And so uh, J1 in two iterates goes to the whole interval. Well, and now you, you, you believe me that J2 goes in three, three iterates to the whole interval, J4 in three, in four, in, actually, J2 in, in three and G, J3 in four iterates and so on, okay? And so we define this induced map. And it's important, you know, to have information on the recurrence times. Well, the recurrence times, according to where, uh, the way we define it, so the points that recur, uh, the, whose recurrence time is bigger than N is precisely the sum of the Js, uh, of the union of the Js with the uh, with, um, index bigger than N. And so this is uh, the sum, and this sum we know by what we know about the, the, the measure of, uh, M here is the Lebesgue measure, okay? Is the reference measure. And so we have this, and so we have this, okay? Oh my God, okay. And so, uh, well, I'm not going to prove you uh, that uh, we have this, uh, gives Markov map, but it's, it's not difficult to believe. You can apply that lemma that I've given you for smooth maps. So this is smooth piecewise map. So the derivative is bigger than one. Uh, so the inverse of derivative is bounded away from one, strictly smaller than one. And this goes bijectively. This map is smooth. So that it has Jacobian, which is the determinant. Well, here is the derivative. And so can easily prove that uh, uh, this is a gives mark of map, for instance, using that lemma. Um, and uh, the greater common divisor is one because uh, with uh, one of the domains has greater common divisor equal to one. And uh, the recurrence times have this estimate. Okay, so we have uh, this nice lemma, and so uh, we can prove. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, so this using uh, this lemma. Uh, for alpha smaller than one. So see that the integrability of the recurrence time is equivalent to alpha belonging to, according to what we have here. So uh, this is equivalent to having alpha between zero and one. So in particular for alpha greater or equal to one, it's no longer integral because for alpha greater or equal to one, we have the, the harmonic series. Uh, but it's important to notice that FR is always defined regardless of the value of a alpha uh, bigger than zero. What happens is that for alpha small, uh, bigger than one, greater or equal to one, uh, the recurrence time is no longer integrable, okay? But uh, this information will, will be useful later. Um, 
So let us focus now on the case uh, zero, uh, alpha between zero and one. So this is the case where the, the recurrence time is integrable. And from previous results, we did use, this was a uh, corollary and, and the previous lemma, uh, because uh, it has an induced map that F has a unique SRB measure mu. Uh, you may say, uh, why uniqueness? Uh, that lemma says that, the uh, corollary says that it's unique in the, in, uh, unique giving positive uh, measure to the domain we induce. Well, but here the domain we induce is the whole interval y, i. So that's why it's unique. And uh, previous results, so you may then use these notes to go back and see what are the results says that the measure, the result says that the measure is equivalent to, to, the, to the measure in the domain we induce. And again, here is the whole interval i. So this to say that the, the, the basin of the measure, so it's an SRB measure, so it is um, a physical measure. And uh, the, by this previous result, which I left as an exercise, the basin uh, of a measure, which is ergodic mu, is uh, mu almost every point. But since mu is equivalent to m, we conclude that the basin is m almost every point in i. And so this is to say that b mu, the basin of mu, covers m almost every point. So in this case, this is to say that in this case, we can prove that so for being a physical measure is only the basin having positive Lebesgue measure, but in this case we can say that the the basin is almost every point in the space belongs in the basin. Okay, and since the greater common divisor is equal to one, we have the exactness of the measure mu. And the conclusion of the decay of correlations follows from the decay of correlations in general uh, using the, this information that the the recurrence times decay at this speed. And so this is plug in there is precisely the statement of theorem, uh, the first item of theorem 226. Uh, so this is the theorem we are proving now. So the case greater or equal to one. Uh, we deduce that FR has a unique ergodic SRV measure, which is equivalent to M. The integrability of the recurrence times is to pass this in some sense, to pass this information to the original system. So we don't need to conclude this for, this is a Gibbs Markov map. We don't need any information on, on, the, on the recurrence times. Uh, moreover, the measure is bounded from below by positive constants. So this is the general result in the very beginning. So if alpha is greater or equal to one, we have that this is the, the estimate uh, 17. Uh, so is this estimate here. We have that uh, R is, does not belong to the L1 space with respect to M, but M is equivalent to new, this new for the FR. And so we know that R does not belong to L1 of that new. And then to conclude the second item, I leave this, this is a somewhat technical and combinatorical um, uh, proposition, the proof. So I leave, I leave here only the statement. And I state it in a, in a way that I can use also in the circle map that comes next. So assume that we have a compact metric space and assume that uh, F as an induced map, that's the case here with M equal to the, the, the interval. And assume that the induced map has, a, has an ergodic uh, F invariant probability measure equivalent to M with R not integral. That's the case. And assume that there is a fixed point for the dynamical system. And this is a nested sequence of neighborhoods of that fixed point, such that the intersection of them all is the fixed point, so they are shrinking to the point, in such a way that this annuli, J is, can be faced as annuli around the, 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 um, the fixed point. Uh, they have this relation, well, which, which is obvious uh, the way we define them. And assume that R, well, you must be identifying all these objects in the example we are considering. The J's are precisely the J's. I'm putting U's because I also want to use this in the, um, in the circle case. But the U's are, are 
the 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 comp the use are are also J's because uh, sorry I'm not I'm not I'm not J. So the 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 user are containing the J's and the user are, are defining as union of the J's, and so we have this relation. Uh, in, in our case, we have this relation. Okay, so we have all these uh, assumptions. And so the, the proposition says that almost every point belongs in the basin of delta zero. So the frequency of visits uh, to arbitrarily small neighborhoods of the, the point X zero is one. That's what we need to prove to, to deduce this. And so we conclude uh, the second item. And uh, see that. Uh, I hope it's somewhat natural to expect that this is true because this is saying that the recurrence type, so it's not integrable. So this is one of the assumptions. It's not integrable, the recurrence times. But the recurrence times are, so see that we have a covering of the space and the, the only possible situation for the recurrence time not being integrable is that they are arbitrarily large near the fixed point according to this uh, situation described here. And for not, be, not being equal implies that the frequency of visits to, to the point delta zero will be one for typical points. And so that's the way we prove this. So of course, the ideas are simple, but implementing them is somewhat tricky, but it works, okay? So finally, and just two more slides, um, or three, three. Uh, so the circle map. So we can consider a family of degree greater or equal to two. Uh, the picture here is, is degree three circle maps is similar to, to what we did before. And, and these are the con conditions translated here that we, I said from that example, what is the important information is essentially this. So we have a fixed point here zero, which coincides with one because we have uh, uh, this uh, circle map. We have derivative bigger than one out of that point. I see that here we don't have this continuity point because this is the circle. So this, the points are identified, the, the, the bottom and the top. And uh, the map is C2 and of this order out of, the, of the, the point zero, okay, of this order. And so we have, uh, we could also use that uh, information to deduce uh, using the, the, the Fundamental theorem of calculus, the orders of f and f prime are related to powers of x uh, alpha. Um, and the conclusion are, are exactly the same. See that this assumption is, is so the assumptions are exactly the, the ones I have here for which I, I deduce this conclusion here. So, using, so this lemma works also in, in the circle case, the lemma 2.27. And so, uh, we can prove this, uh, this result as well. But we have, so the advantage in the circle map is that we could induce very easily. Here, an, an obtainer gives Markov map. Here is not that simple. This is the problem. And so let us uh, see how can we do this in this case. There is also a natural partition. We can also consider, uh, uh, this point here, z, uh, z0, z1, so on, the, the defined as, as before, so recursively like this, and associated to this fixed point here. Uh, so first of all, let me introduce this, this object. So we have uh, d intervals, which are naturally uh, sent to the whole S1, but the point zero. Uh, this is due to the degree of the transformation. So I have all, so I have a first interval here. So I consider them in the natural, a certain natural order. So I consider I, I1 here and ID here. And then uh, I use the same construction I did before in the interval map. I start with this point uh, here. I consider the pre-images and I do the same here. And I obtain this uh, natural partition. What is the natural partition? So you can see that the intervals from uh, one, so from two to D minus one, if they exist, because uh, it may happen uh, that D is equal to two. And if D is equal to two, then Z zero prime is equal to Z zero. And we, we only have these J's. But if it's not equal to two, there are intervals here in between. Uh, 
the intervals are sent by f onto the whole s1 minus zero and with derivative bigger than one so it's, it's good intervals in the sense that with them we can build some kind of uh, gives markov map the problem is 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 near this fixed point which is on both sides and so we, inter we define interval similar to what we did before and we consider this natural partition so are the intervals between two and d minus one if they exist if they don't exist forget this first part of this union and you consider the intervals jn and, and jn primes which have similar properties to the ones i considered before so now on both sides uh but now inducing well if you try to do what i did before we have problems it's not it's not simple to induce now and obtaining a gibbs mark we obtain a weak gibbs mark of map and I'm going, that's what I'm, I'm going to tell you to finish uh, uh, this presentation today. So, uh, so what is uh, the transformation I'm going to define? So we assume for the intervals here in between, uh, so here uh, we have the intervals from uh, two to D minus one. So for those intervals, the recurrence time is precisely one. Again, I'm going to induce in the whole S1. And for those intervals is equal to one. Well, that's okay because the interval i, each of these intervals i i is sent by f onto the whole interval s one minus zero, and the derivative is strictly bigger than one, uniformly bounded away from one. The problem is on the two intervals i one and i d. So for this is okay. For the other ones, uh, we are going to use not the partition. Uh, the intervals i1 and id but these sub intervals and i define the recurrence time let's let's see the first case so the first case is for j1 for j1 i define the recurrence time equal to one so what does it do so see that uh, the leftmost point of j1 when i iterate once it goes to the rightmost point which is z0 okay and the rightmost point, it goes to one here. So what is the image of J1 by one iterate? Is the interval from the rightmost point of J1, which is uh, Z0 to one. So it's precisely uh, this union of intervals here, okay? Uh, what have we done in the circle? In the circle, uh, it also happened uh, like this. So it fall onto the rightmost interval. And then I, I iterated once more. So here I'm taking only n, not n plus one as before. And you may say, why don't you take n plus one? Because if I have uh, more intervals here, when I iterate once more restricted to this interval, I2 to ID, the map is no longer injective. And so we lose that first uh, Markov property of sending the domains bijectively to the domain of in where we are inducing so that's why we cannot do this uh, in this case so we that's why we have this uh, problem in general and uh but this is uh, so the problem and, and from the right hand side you, you we are going to fall onto this interval here for those in the middle they fall onto s1 this is always mode zero actually is s1 minus zero so this is the proper the, the the three properties of Gibbs mark of uh, G two up to G four they are easily verified because the only problem is is the geometric Markov property, so this is what I call in my book a weak Gibbs Markov transformation. So what is weak Gibbs Markov it is replacing the Markov property by the image of element in the partition is a, a union of elements in the partition. I would say that this is closer to the Markov condition in general. So Markov is in general is this for, for partitions is uh, image of an, an element is, is the union of, is a union of elements in the partition. Um, so um, we, we replace this and that's what I mean by G1 by this G1 prime. And that's what I mean by we gives Markov maps. And it's not difficult to see that this week gives Markov maps also have absolutely continuous invariant probability measures. 
but they are not necessarily unique as they are for Gibbs mark of, uh, Gibbs mark of transformation. But uh, they exist. So uh, using uh, the proposition which says that if we have uh, a good measure for the induced map, then we have a good measure for, for F, for the original map, we deduce uh, the existence of um, uh, an SRB measure for F as well. Well, uniqueness, uh, see that uh, here, even at the level of the induced map, we don't have uniqueness. And, and, uh, but here, so we don't have necessarily, in general, for Gibbs, we Gibbs mark. In this case, we have. Uh, so what, what, what I was saying was, in general, we Gibbs mark we don't have unique map. Because here, we can use some topological properties, because in, 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 in some intervals, it goes to the whole uh, interval S1 minus zero. And so we can use that information and deduce that the measure is unique, in fact. And, and, and see that the, 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 the recurrence times, they have est as an estimate as well, is the sum now of the J's and the J primes. And uh, the estimates for J and J prime are similar, uh, are the same as that we had before in the interval map. So we have, we arrived to the same co-estimate. And, uh, but the problem here is that for the decay of correlation, there's no way we need to have a mark of a strong, a full branch map to use um, young result. It may be true that uh, it can be proved that uh, under some, that's an interesting problem, open problem, under some assumptions on the greater common divisors, and I guess under some uh, combinatorics of the recurrence times, we can probably deduce also uh, the decay of correlations for weak gives for systems with weak gives mark of map, but I, I, I've never seen that result, and uh, so I cannot use that result. But that's an, a very interesting problem, open problem, um, because this has to do with with the mark of processes and being a periodic. So if, if it's full branch, it's okay. If it's not full branch, it's still okay, provided it's a periodic. So I guess that's the condition we need. Something similar transposed to, to this situation we have. Um, so we cannot use it. So the idea in this case is to induce again. And there's a, a lot of freedom that we can, that we have. And for instance, inducing, actually in practice, what I do is I induce to, uh, I show that it can, in, in my book, I show that it can be, in, uh, we can have the first return to one of the J's, but in practice is important for, for some other proposals to have the, the domain where we induce arbitrarily small. And so we can induce to any of these J's, but uh, in, in, here we can induce to J1. So the first return time to, to the first return map to J1 is actually a Gibbs Markov induced map. And the tail, it can be shown. This is not simple, it's not uh, straightforward, but it can be shown that uh, this new, so it's, it's actually a new recurrence time to J1 uh, is in fact, is in, in, still integrable, but much more than that, uh, the new uh, recurrence time, it has the same uh, uh, estimates of this R here. So, and so that's the way we obtain the decay of correlation conclusions for the, this uh, circle map. And okay, so this is, uh, as I said, is important to build uh, that solenoid with intermittency. Okay, and so that's all for today. In the next day, we will see uh, gives, uh, so uh, young structures for uh, diffeomorphisms for maps which also have, so uh, the idea here for this uh, endomorphic construction is to have, is to apply this to systems with no contracting directions. And uh, in the next day, next week, we are going to see uh, the case where we have uh, systems with contracting directions. And so we have to adapt this Gibbs mark of structures to this context. And that's where the young structures will appear. So uh, in some sense, is, is, some is some structure where we put 
stable manifolds. And when you collapse to through stable manifolds, we obtain the structure that we built before this Gibbs Markov structure. That's the rough idea. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions?